Today, the Athletic Scott Wheeler released his top 50 prospects in the NHL. And Islanders fans were not happy because there wasn't an Islander prospect that made the cut. So here are the top five reasons you shouldn't worry about the Islanders prospect pool. As always, hit that subscribe button. Don't miss a video. Go to Twitter and follow at TLO Mitch. That's me. Don't miss any breaking information about Islanders prospects I have yet to cover on the channel. So today, Scott Wheeler released his top 50 prospects in the NHL, and the Islanders did have a player make the cut. They didn't even have a player make the top 14 or the 14 honorable mentions, that is. So here are five reasons you shouldn't worry about that. Factor number one, where the Islanders are in their life cycle. The Islanders are competing for a Stanley Cup right now. And when teams compete for Stanley Cups, as in like they are a cup contender, because everyone is competing for Stanley Cups at the start of the year, but the cream of the crop, the top end teams that are probably in the mix for Stanley Cup, they're selling off assets or future assets to bring in current assets, right? You got to give to get. And the Islanders are giving future assets in order to bring in current top end talent. So they're trading off first round picks to bring in Jean-Gabriel Pajot, Kyle Palmieri, and to another extent, Travis Zajac. That's what they're doing. And so they don't have top end talent. Of course, they haven't picked in the first round of the first cup in the last couple of years. And yes, there are some teams in this top 50 that have players drafted in the second and even in the third round, but they are few and far between. I think there's last I counted six. So just over 10% of the players in that list were drafted outside of the first round. So where the Islanders are in their life cycle matters. They are not drafting talent to build a future contender. They are a current contender and thus selling off assets that could be top end prospects. Factor number two, the Islanders top end prospects have graduated to the NHL. That's why they're not being looked at in his list. In term, in, for Scott Wheeler's list, he's not looking at any NHL regulars. And some of the Islanders' top prospects, Noah Dobson and Oliver Wallstrom, are NHL regulars. You go back to last year's list, and Oliver Wallstrom is the 33rd ranked prospect in the NHL, according to Scott Wheeler. If you look at the comments, he would have put Noah Dobson in the top 50, but the only reason he didn't is because he spent the entire year in the NHL. Like... The, these players are top-end prospects, and the only reason they're not anymore is because they're in the NHL, making a direct impact at the NHL level. I'm sorry, but that's exactly what you want. What are we complaining about? I'm only at number two, and I'm losing it. Yes, the Islanders don't have a top-50 prospect now because they don't have prospects necessarily. Their top-end prospects are NHLers. Oh, <laughs> The third factor, the Islanders still have a decent number of quality players in the pipeline. They have Robin Salo, Samuel Bozik, Ruslan Ishkakov, Alturatu. Like, they have good players coming up. Now, they're not top end, top 10 picks, although Ratu probably could have been. Either way, uh, they're not top end picks now. So they fall a little bit back there. But there's not to say that they aren't quality players. And that's not to think of the guys like Colin Adams, who could also be a top quality player. There's quality in this system, and while there might not be top-end talent, when you look at the Islanders roster, it's not full of top-end talent either. It's useful players that can serve a purpose that all play a specific role. So the Islanders could, feasibly, bring in piece by piece to fill in other pieces as they leave over the years. That's possible. So like this, this pipeline may not have another Matthew Bars Allen in it, necessarily, but they've got other serviceable members in that prospect pool that could come in at the NHL level at some point. So this isn't all doom and gloom. The fourth factor, you got to consider the gems that the Islanders could find in this prospect pool. You got Williams Full that could be a 40 goal scorer at the QMJHL level that they drafted in the fifth round last year. It's not to say he's going to be a 40 goal scorer at the NHL level. But when someone puts in 40 at the QMJHL level, there's something to it. It's Again, it's not to say guaranteed NHLer, but you've got to take notice of that and go like, all right, well, you know, that's probably not a fifth round caliber player if he's putting in 40, even at the QMJHL level. You've also got guys like Aturatu that I already mentioned. It's a 52nd overall pick that could 
be a top six center in the NHL if things go well, and so far they sure are. You've got Alexi Malinin. I love this kid's game. Love it. He's got skates. He can make heads up play. He can put up points. He can move the puck. Like, this guy's got everything to be a, a Robin Sallow 2.0, and we all love Robin Sallow. And then you've got Bodie Wild. Bodie Wild has had two really poor years and not really to his own doing, right? He got injured two years ago, couldn't really get into the AHL squad, went to the OHL, dominated, was a point-per-game player, and then the season got canceled because of COVID. Then he comes into the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, who with all due respect weren't very good, and plays a serviceable role in only 24 games. Remember, Bodie Wild should have been a first-round talent. And also, he made Scott Wheeler's list three years ago. So, like, this is a good prospect that can turn into something that we're just not thinking of right now because, to be fair, he didn't have a great showing over the last couple of years. But we can't forget about him. The fifth factor is, what kind of scouting has happened over the last two years? I just mentioned it when talking about Bodie Wild that COVID really interrupted last year, but it also interrupted this year. A lot of leagues either didn't play or didn't play much. So what kind of scouting are we getting on some of these prospects? Right, it's no no disrespect to Scott Wheeler. His list is great and I have no, no qualms with any of the players he put in there. But you're going to see a lot of fluctuation with some of these players who maybe have been at the bottom of the list and make the top of it next year or, or, or turn into NHL stars or players who aren't even on the list turn into NHL stars. Aturatu, everyone! Aturatu! Come on here! There's possibility for a lot of, of upheaval and movement with these prospects going forward because a not there wasn't a lot of scouting that happened over the last two years. So with that in mind, all those five factors together, you have to think of the Islanders prospect pool with a little bit more positivity. It's not to say that the Islanders prospect pool is the best and you're sleeping on the Islanders prospect pool. No, it's that there are reasons why the Islanders aren't in the top 50. And there's, there are a bunch of good reasons why they aren't. Again, they're not competing for top-end prospects right now. Their top-end prospects are in the NHL. Um, they're still quality players in the pipeline. They're finding gems in the later rounds. And like, what kind of information do we have on these recent prospects to begin with? So really, step back from the ledge. The Islanders prospect pool is okay for where they are. Again, they don't have top-end talent. But that's okay. When it comes time that they need to start accumulating top-end talent, they will. I have no questions about that or no qualms about that whatsoever, and nor should you. Thank you for following. Thank you for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, click it, please. And if you have, thank you, thank you, thank you.